Imagine this, you invested in a decent home espresso setup because you crave the ability to pull rich barista quality shots whenever you want. But then you go online and get bombarded by a fire hose of conflicting advice, sweeping proclamations and pretentious gatekeepers. Does that sound familiar? With so much noise going on in the online espresso space, it's enough to make you want to give up and go back to instant coffee right away. But what if I told you that there's a beautiful simple solution the 80-20 rule, also known as the Pareto principle, it also applies to espresso. This principle states that a small portion of courses drive the majority of results. To make consistently delicious espresso at home, it means focusing your limited time and effort on just a few high impact fundamentals that get you 80% of the way to the final result. So for now, let's leave all the fussy routines behind because today's video is all about looking at what actually matters the most when it comes to the result in the cup. So first, let's focus on the equipment. When most people begin their espresso journey, that's naturally the place they'll focus, both because espresso equipment is very cool and also because you kind of get this idea that if you have a very awesome machine, then you can just brew great espresso. Well, to be honest, that's not really the case. As you can see here around me, I have both espresso tools, machines and grinders. And what do you think is the most important thing? Well, maybe you guessed right, it is the grinder. It really feels counterintuitive, but how the grinder cuts the beans really makes all the difference for how the espresso is going to taste. Not all grinders can grind fine enough for espresso, and even if they can grind fine enough, it doesn't mean that it tastes good. And to further complicate things, even if an espresso is uh, quote-unquote good, it's not necessarily good for all types of espresso. So here next to me, I have the DF54 with uh, SSP high uniformity burrs. It's a very good grinder. Uh, you can pull uh, good dark, medium roast, and even light roast on this one here. Uh, the Eureka Mignon Zero, on the other hand, you can pull really good dark and medium roast, but I wouldn't say it's that capable for light roast. And it's a little bit the same with the manual grinders I have here, the Espresso J Max, very capable for darker roast, uh, but not that great for medium and light roast. And then next to it, the J Ultra, it's just a little bit of a different burr set inside, a uh, different geometry, but that really makes all the difference. And that means that it's uh, just a lot better for medium roasts. So the grinder really determines a lot when it comes to mouthfeel and texture of the shot and also to a certain degree the taste, the perception of uh, sweetness, bitterness and balance, it's all very much got to do with the grinder. It's a little bit like if you make pesto at home, uh, do you blend the herbs or do you use a mortar and pestle? It's the same ingredients but the way things are chopped up or crushed will change the flavor quite a bit. So a good grinder is definitely one of these small things that makes a massive difference. Of course you also need to know how to adjust the grinder, uh, it has to grind quite fine, uh, for you to extract the shot properly. But if you just follow a kind of a traditional rule of thumb, uh, where you need to have a shot that comes out in around 25 to 35 seconds, uh, then you'll be fine and then you can just dial it in from there. Now let's talk a little bit about the espresso machine. As you can see, I have a few different models uh, next to me and behind me. Essentially, the function of an espresso machine is to push hot water through the coffee grounds at a certain pressure, the industry standard is uh, 6 to 9 bars. There are so many different uh, espresso machine designs out there and it's possible to obsess endlessly over all these small details such as pre-infusion, pressure, flow profiling, levers, adjustable PID, heat exchanger versus single boiler versus dual boiler. It's an endless jungle. So to cut through all this and just focus on the 80-20, I will say an espresso machine just has to be consistent, especially when it comes to the temperature. So if you look at these machines uh, next to me, I have some levers that can do uh, pressure profiling and stuff like that. I think this is all very fascinating, but since we're 80-20ing here, I have to take a machine that has a, a more consistent brew temperature over this. If you brew espresso with water that's not hot enough, then it's just not going to taste good. And if it's too hot and comes out uh, of the group head steaming, then you have even more issues. So boil down to the essential, an espresso machine should just pump out water at the right temperature in a consistent way. An old fashioned single bottle machine, such as the Gadget Classic, many people start their espresso journey with that model. Uh, without a PID, it's a bit of a nightmare. It's pretty much just guesswork what temperature uh, of water that's coming out of the machine. Before I tell you about that last thing that's in that super important 20% bracket, 
then we have to talk a little bit about NordVPN, who's kindly sponsoring this video. So as uh, discerning coffee geeks and geeks in a more general sense, we know how important it is to protect our identities from threats like data mining, uh, mega corporations, or increasingly intrusive ad trackers. Well, NordVPN keeps your online coffee browsing completely secure and anonymous with elite encryption. That means that you can safely research new cool roasters, hang out on your favorite coffee forums, or you know, look up other stuff, all without any prying eyes invading your privacy. But NordVPN isn't just great for keeping your internet activities to yourself. With servers in over 60 countries, the lightning fast VPN also allows you to bypass geographical restrictions and access coffee content from all over the world. So if you want to watch coffee YouTube, in a country with uh, internet censorship, or even visit the Espresso subreddit, then NordVPN is the key to unlocking that full internet experience. You can get started today by going to nordvpn.com slash coffee chronicler. That's the special link in the video description to get a really good deal on a two year plan, plus four months for free. And with NordVPN's 30 day money back guarantee, it's totally risk free to try. So let's all raise an espresso shot or a coffee mug to online privacy and to NordVPN for sponsoring this video and supporting the channel. You can check out the link nordvpn.com slash coffee chronicler or follow the link down in the pinned comment. And now let's get back to the last and very important part of understanding espresso. Of course, we also have to talk about the beans. Quality beans means a lot for the extraction. But what exactly are quality espresso beans? My point of view is that the best beans for espresso is not necessarily the best beans for filter coffee and the other way around. In food, we have a lot of different dishes and a lot of different ways to cook these dishes. For instance, the meat that you use for a steak in a fine dining restaurant is not the same meat you use for a stew. Something like brisket can be the most delicious thing if it's done right, but if it's used for the wrong thing, it's horrible. The same for hamburgers, usually use a different kind of meat for that. So that is to say that there are some cuts that are more expensive and quote unquote more premium, and then there are some that are cheaper. Both can be delicious, but they should be used for the right purpose. Espresso is fundamentally a different drink from filter coffee. The strength can be up to 10 times stronger. So I don't find it strange at all that you'd use different beans for it than filter coffee. Imagine if you have a lemon and you squeeze the juice into a glass of water, then it's pretty easy to drink. Then take the same lemon and drink the juice straight it's going to be a lot more acidic. So it's exactly the same with coffee beans. Some beans just taste better at a concentrated ratio and some beans require more dilution, so to speak. Of course, technically you can make espresso with uh, very light roast beans. I'm not saying it's impossible. In the same way, you can also make a hamburger with expensive wakio beef, but I will say it's a bit more of a niche thing. It's not really the best use of that resource. So what is a good espresso coffee according to me? Well, it's a coffee that's roasted in a suitable way, so it's easy to extract, while still giving you a taste that you like. If you want flavor notes such as dark chocolate and nuts, then I don't blame you. I think chocolate and nuts taste great, so why can't my coffee taste like that? In coffee, you have so-called Q graders, people like myself who are trained to assign a quality score to coffee beans. Usually coffee scoring 85 to 86 points are really prized among coffee geeks, whereas the beans that are scoring lower, perhaps around 80 to 82 points, are a bit more ignored. And I think that's a shame. The fact is that most coffee grown in the world is not 85 points and above, just like most beef is not Wagyu tenderloin. In food, there's this movement called nose to tail that puts a lot of uh, honor in not having any byproducts and wasting stuff. Well, the same farm that makes all the fancy and expensive coffee uh, will also have some lower scoring coffee. And I don't think it's a shame to use it for espresso. So long story short, good beans for espresso are beans that fit the brewing method and are also roasted to be good for espresso. It's also beans that are reasonably fresh. So actually, I think at the core, espresso is super basic. Have an excellent grinder, some fresh, medium dark roast beans, and brew them at the right temperature. If you get these three things right, then you're really on a good path. Then from there, I'll say the next step is to look at your espresso recipe, what's your input, what's your output, how long time does it take to brew. That stuff is also really important. But uh, to be honest, if you have good beans and a good grinder, then you should get something pretty tasty, even if you're just uh, using volumetric measurements. So, you know, filling the basket to the same level every time and trying to aim for the same level in your espresso cup. After you've mastered all these things, then I'd look at other things like uh, espresso accessories, 
precision baskets, timbers. What I've noticed just from looking at friends and family is that they will often have quite good equipment, but then they will buy so-called uh, Omni Roasts from one of the hip roasters in town. And I'm sorry to say, if you have a Breville Barista Express uh, with that built-in conical grinder, uh, not a bad word about it, but you're just not going to be able to extract those beans properly. You'll need something a lot more high-end, uh, probably something like the DF64 Gen 2 with some special burrs. Uh, also, if you're going to add oat milk to that coffee, it's just not going to taste good. You need something darker. I also know other people that have super expensive uh, machines, but then they use uh, six months old coffee that's been stale and some uh, bag that hasn't been closed properly. So if you just focus on the basics, then uh, everything should taste a lot better. Espresso is an endless rabbit hole. There are so many things you can care about, but if you don't want to waste your time, then uh, focus on this. And by the way, I've been talking a lot about grinders in this video. So if you're in the market for a new grinder, then I'll put a link to a review of a new one that I was really blown away by. So uh, click that link and then I'll see you over in that video.